So the, the topic that I'm speaking on today is financial keys and the importance of savings and investing. Um, and it's a topic that I like, and, and, but it's a topic that is actually not very complicated. Um, but because even though it is not very complicated, it still gives us a lot of challenges sometimes. Um, and I like to you know, link this topic to something that is more everyday for us, and that is weight and dieting. And you know, we all know how to eat, and we oftentimes know what we should eat, but we still have difficulty maintaining our diet and maintaining our weight. And, and I think the same issues arise when we talk about saving and we talk about investing. Um, and I will, I will get into that and I'll kind of explain why that is so and how, that, how, it, how it works. But at the start of the presentation, I want to address an issue um, in terms of how to go about registering a business. Um, I was asked to do so um, as part of the presentation. And then I get into the core topic of the importance of savings and investments. And registering a business, and I know this is we speaking to in terms of entrepreneurship and so on. Um, and so I understand the importance of the topic, but it's it is a, a pretty seamless process, and there is quite a bit of information around in relation to this. Um, usually, you get from you know your accountants and stuff. So, so, but I will go through it very briefly. Um, the first thing is you already need to decide the type of business that you want to form. And that is whether you have been a sole trader, a partnership or a limited liability company. Um, the, I, I wouldn't go into the details of, of, you know, what choice that you should make. I already will want to kind of focus on the limited liability company itself because that's really eventually where you'd want to end up. Um, the process of, of starting off, you you undertake a, a company search and you do that by going to the company's registry. You can do that yourself actually off the website. Um, and you, what you're looking for is to see if the name that you want to register, if it's already taken. Um, and if it's not taken, great, then you can apply to have the name approved and reserved. Um, the cost of this is I think nominal, it's about $20. Where, where people have gotten tripped up and I myself have gotten tripped up with this is um, if the registrar thinks that the name that you want to register is close to another company. So just a couple months ago, I was trying to register a company that had um, tree, a letter and tree in the, in the name. And um, they said it was too close to C tree, which is the mall in South. And so even though it was a different letter, I had to go through a process of either deciding whether I wanted to change the name that I, landed on or the other way to approach this is you write to the company that may be affected and you ask them for their permission to proceed under the name that you originally selected and if they give you that permission then you proceed to inform the registrar um, in writing and, and then the process moves if not well you have to change your name right um, pre-covid this process took about a week uh, experience a bit of delays in my own um, space in relation to it but that's a understandable in the environment that we're in. And the next step after you've gotten the name of the um, company is you need to submit that name. Um, once you've gotten the, the search approved, you need to submit the name of the company and then have it formally reserved and, and registered um, for you. Sandrine, is everything okay? Yes, yes. Yeah, right. So far, so good. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. If if I if I drop off, just let me know because because I'm sharing screen and I'm not actually seeing um my camera is is, is not um there. I'm off of a, an iPad. Um, and then we get to the place of the registering the business itself. And as I said, we deal with registration as a limited liability company. Um, you need to submit your name approvals. You need to have your articles of incorporation, which is usually a standard document that um, um, your accountants can prepare for you. You need to get a notice of a registered address for the company and a notice of directors. You usually require at least two directors to form a company. Um, and so it's not a very difficult process. It's not a very costly process. Um, I, I've known people who have done the necessary research through the various agencies and, been, and done it themselves. I've known, known people who you know, just save themselves the time and, 
have a, a, a fee along the lines of what I've posted up here. You can um, you know, hire an accountant who can do this for you um, pretty quickly. But registering a business is a key step in starting up a business. And that is really where you now get into the frame of the world of entrepreneurship. And that is a good place to now jump off um, to get into the core of the presentation. And the core of the presentation, as, as the topic has been set, is financial keys. And I like the way the, the topic has been framed because it gives me a chance to seamlessly discuss uh, what I think is probably the most, one of the most important topics in personal finance. And, and saving and investment is really a personal finance topic. And the only reason why I like this topic a little bit is because it has a little bit of nostalgia to it because the second article that I wrote in Business Guardian all of 16 years ago was on the topic of saving and investment. Um, as you know, I'm a columnist there for the past 16 years and 750 newspaper articles and columns later, um, we're here again talking about it. And the truth is that it's a topic that, that never gets old. As we go into this discussion, I just want to say that um, you know, my style, my, my point of view in terms of how we treat with finance with, with, with folks is that sometimes finance people tend to overcomplicate things. Um, you notice I've put together sli some slides and it looks all very simple and that is deliberate. Um, no set of graphics, nothing, because I, I actually like simple. Um, and because we tend to overcomplicate things, we turn it into something that people have difficulty grasping. And, and many times, if you can't grasp something, you're turned off by it because you feel you can't do it. The, the truth is that savings and investments are very simple com, uh, concepts and you have the ability to do both. Uh, you don't need a set of fancy products or a set of fancy advisors. And in fact, a credit union, with a credit union, you have a good vehicle to use to move forward um, in terms of, you know, positioning yourself to save and invest. Because it's really not up to someone to tell you what to do. You could easily figure out what to do today. And I will give you a little bit of insight into how, how to go about doing that. And I want to start with a little kind of phrase to put forward. Because if you change the way you think about something, you will change the way you act. And so what I want you to think to do now is to not think about saving and investing as this complicated thing but as something that is actually quite simple and within your grasp and easy to do, right? And within this, I think it's, I, I'm, Sandrine, I, was it you who said the topic in terms of financial keys? Yes, yes. Myself and, and Akila Hines at RAN, we discussed it and we came up with that um, theme. Well, I, I actually love that, that term, financial keys. And because when you say keys, you know, you have a set of keys, you have to use a lock. Um, you, you have to use keys to open a lock, right? Yes. Otherwise, there's really no point in having a key. Correct. And a key, a key that can open many locks is, is, is a valuable key, but, but a lock that could be opened with many keys doesn't have much worth. And so you, what you want to have in your hand is a key that can open many locks and, and the locks that guards the door to financial success. And so, you know, that type of analogy, I, I like... It happened by accident, but when you put it forward in that way, I said, yeah, you know, this, this really is a nice way to approach the, the conversation. So let's talk a little bit about savings and investing. So that everyone is clear as to what we're talking about, right? What is savings? What is investing? To a lay person, the term saving and investing is, uh, is used in the change. Right? Sometimes you say I'm saving money. Sometimes you say I have, I have money to invest. Um, but from the perspective of creating and building your personal wealth, these, these two activities generate different financial outcomes. And, it, and if we're not clear on it, then we get mixed up. And, and the reason we use savings and investing interchangeably is because they actually involve um, a similar concept. And that similar concept is what I have with the last bullet there called deferred gratification. Because what is deferred gratification? That is that is the you setting aside money that you could spend today in order to spend it at a, sometime in the future. And whether you are saving or you are investing, you're more or less undertaking that same activity. 
Um, and oftentimes, you know, people give up the fight and give in to the temptation. So you start off saving and you start off investing for a particular purpose, just as I made the analogy to, to dieting, right? And then something comes along and then you decide to cash in and spend the money now. So without that innate ability to defer spending today, you're going to have difficulty saving and you're going to have difficulty investing. But then, but we, so we talked to these similarities just now as to what, what is saving and what is investing, why they're similar, but what, what is the difference? And the difference is important because savings generally involves passive accumulation. So you're, you're, you're basically looking to accumulate money in order to be able to spend it at a later date. While investing is, a, is another type of accumulation in the sense that you are expecting to be able to increase the amount because you are seeking a return. So with savings, the rate of return is not as important as your ability to accumulate. With investing, the rate of return is what you are set out to accomplish. And those, the, the, those two objectives are sometimes easily confused. The thing about it is that we try to mix the two. We try to mix the two together because we're not clear on what it is we're doing. And then when, when we're not clear on it, um, you know, we want to have the security that comes with the saving and the accumulation. And then we want to have the investment return at the same time. And so we talk about, you know, should we look for guarantees? And the thing about it is that in finance, there are no guarantees. Um, you will recall in the past decade that, that people invested in Clico products because of a guarantee. And I think the reality is that we realized the hard way that what was deemed a guarantee was not a guarantee. And we know that story. And even today, people look out for guarantees. Um, but if you want to find the, the key to the financial lock, then you have to understand that there are no guarantees. And the best time to understand that is now, because we're in the middle of a pandemic and things that have up until the beginning of this year seemed impossible to consider are now normal, right? Um, you can't travel out of the country. People can't travel into the country. Um, going to work is prohibited in certain places. You have to work from home. The, none of these things were, were were dreamed of at the start of the year. And so here we are. Um, and so with, all, with that understanding that there are no guarantees that a lot of people have these challenges with saving and investing and entrepreneurship and everything associated with finance. And so what is the key that can open this lock? The key is the discussion about risk. Because we talk about saving, we talk about investing, we talk about risk and passing, but, but we don't really understand risk. And we don't really understand risk because we don't speak about it often enough. And that's why I like the, opportunity, like the way this, this, um, this topic was framed because it gives me that opportunity to speak about risk. Because risk is the difference between saving and investing. And risk also helps you to understand how much of your money you should save and how much of your money should, you should invest. Risk is the instrument that, that, is kind of, that, is, that is key to guide you to save in the first place. And an appreciation of risk guides you to save more and then to invest and then to invest more. And then you use those funds to become an entrepreneur and then, and then go into the process to take on a different types of risk. And so risk is there, it's all around you. And the thing about risk is risk is not some mathematical formula that we tend to find when we talk about it in finance circles. Risk is really about your psychology and, and how you think about something. It is, it is not the, the idea that um, you sit down and you do certain calculations and you, and you come up with, with, with risk 
it is really your, your, what you believe and what you feel and, and how things are positioned to you. So let me, let me try to get that, that um, you know, question, that, that issue. Let me bring it forward a little bit. Sandrine, do you allow like um, questions within the uh, like answers during the session? So like if I ask this question, what is risky or an eight to four job of being an entrepreneur? No, no. No? You so won't. yeah, so you just have to you just have to continue. Right. And yeah, if we have questions, yeah. we will take those questions and share with you. Okay, so I'll treat it as a as a kind of rhetorical question in the sense that um, you know, what is riskier? Is it an eight to four job or being an entrepreneur? And the thing is that based on the data and, and what we know, being an entrepreneur is riskier, right? Because most businesses fail and the ones that succeed um, tend to not go past the first generation. So it's riskier to be an entrepreneur, but it's also riskier, risky to have all your eggs in one basket, right? The eight to four basket. And most times we don't appreciate it, that that, that is a risk. And then, but then COVID come along and an oil shock comes along and the company that you work for shuts down and you lose your job. And so something that we didn't see as being risky suddenly is now very risky. And, and that is the, the, the challenge that we, we have to, to grasp because risk is really in the eye of the beholder and each of us understands and experiences risk differently. And so risk is not really what people say it is. When you talk to a financial professional and they talk about risk and your understanding of risk is two different things. In finance, when we talk about risk, we talk about the volatility of returns, right? Something that can go up and down and how much you're likely to gain or lose. But for you, risk is a different concept. Risk is the things that you don't see. Risk is the things that you're not prepared for. And I know that might sound obvious, um, because if you were prepared for it, then it wouldn't be a risk. It's just something that happened that you've managed to deal with. What we bring as finance professionals, bring risk as a mathematical formula because that is for our convenience. But the question that you might be asking is, if risk is something that you don't see, how do you prepare for it? And this is where the, and that's where the hint at the bottom is. Uh, individual, you manage risk by saving. And that is where the, the financial key, um, saving and investing, comes forward. Because you ask the question, why do you need to save and, and why should you invest? And the usual answer is that we save and invest in order to put money to work so that it could grow and so that it will be there for us. And that is a correct answer. That's a simple answer. But when you're saving money for a car, it is usually, and when somebody is telling you to save money for a car, it's usually because somebody on the other side wants to sell you a car. And when somebody is telling you to save money for a house, it's because somebody on the other side wants to sell you a house. I'll give you a personal reason why you should save. And that personal reason is that you will have more confidence. Sounds strange, right? But when you, when you don't have confidence you don't do the things that you want to do in life and because you're afraid to do it. And so you ask yourself then, how does risk give you, how, how does saving give you confidence? Because when you take, when you undertake an activity, let's just say you go to work eight to four every day, you're taking a risk that you will be able to exchange your time for enough money to satisfy the needs of your lifetime. And when you operate a business, you are taking a risk that your time and investment will turn a profit. Once you've gone through that process and you made some money, the first thing that you, you should realize is that you go through risk to, to, to earn money, but you have to do the opposite of that in order to keep money. And that is what savings is. You have to recognize that the success that I had in earning this a little bit of this amount of money has some element of my sweat into it, but also has some element of luck. And if I understand that, then I will understand that I may not be as lucky the next time. And so I am, I am going to set aside a certain amount of money to save. 
And if you put it so simply, you realize that you don't need any kind of fancy investment plan or anything like that. You just need to understand that maybe tomorrow might be different to today. And therefore, in order to give me the confidence and the ability to face tomorrow, I need to create a buffer now. And that buffer is my savings. And, and again, the lesson of the pandemic is, is, is the lesson in understanding that. And, and you don't save money because you have more money. Because it's also easier to spend when you have more money. So you save money, you, you save money because you should. And because you realize that some of your current success is down to an element of luck. And some of it is down to things that will change in the future. And that therefore you must save. But saving alone is not enough. You need to invest as well. Savings allows you to survive. Savings allows you to, to, to go through the, the tough times. And again, this, this pandemic is the, the biggest lesson from this pandemic. And I think I said this on another show with you, Sandrine, that the biggest yes. lesson from this yes. pandemic is the understanding that you need to save because that provides you with the buffer to be able to stay in the game until the storm is over. It allows you to wait for the job that you want instead of taking the job that you have to take because you don't have any money. And you understand how that ties into, back into confidence. And so savings is your basic risk management tool. And it's only when you're done with savings that you should start to invest, not before. And I'll tell you why. And this is how the cycle works and works positively. Because investing is not a complicated process. Investing is, we try to, you know, we make it complicated by trying to figure out what stocks to buy, when to buy it, how is the market going up, is it going down, how much stocks to have, how much bonds to have, all of those variables. And a lot of that, we, we see a sort of financial news and we realize that we can't control any of those things. I mean, sometimes you don't even understand it. What we could control is what we do. And what I'm saying is that if you have savings as a buffer and then you invest, and let's say you invest and a pandemic hits and the stock market tanks, but you, you wouldn't need to sell because I already have my buffer in place in terms of my savings. And therefore I can stay the course. I can, I can, I can invest in good solid companies um, and I can stay the course because they remain good solid companies. And I don't have to panic and I don't have to be fearful. And then I will be able to allow a market to do what a market has done from the beginning of time. Markets present investors with returns, but you have to be in the market in order to get that return. But you're not going to be in the market if you're scared, but you're not going to be scared if you have sufficient buffers and those buffers come from savings. And so we now start to get the understanding and the interplay between risk, saving and investment. And, you know, the, this, the more you save is actually the more you feel comfortable investing. And then as your investment grows, you can feel comfortable saving more. And then you could invest more. And then before you know that, what happens is you are into a very powerful wealth creation cycle. And it starts to go. The point I want to make at the end of all of this is that this is a process and it and the process starts with that key the key is understanding risk and respecting risk right and if you do that then you can use that key to open the lock and the lock is saving and saving to create the buffers that you need in order to be able to be comfortable and it is and it's when you are comfortable then you can move savings to invest in and when you do that in that cycle, as a, uh, and I'm saying it deliberately, and because usually in my in my profession, people come to me. Um, I want to take some money that I had saving, and I want to buy stocks, and so we jump into into the, this framework. That's why this 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 session was set out like this deliberately, right? So that when you move from savings to investing, it is because you are comfortable with the amount of savings that you have, and 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 the last point I want to make, which is not really on the slide is we tend to think that we have to start investing quickly in order to reach where we want to get to. What we need to do is we need to start saving. And once you're saving and you get the buffers in place, 
then you start to invest. And if you are able to stay the course with your investments, investments compound. And if you look at it, um, just use the, 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 this time of the pandemic as an example. The market crashed in the, in the US in, in March when this whole um, issue came to the fore, but it rebounded shortly afterwards. And now you have the president, the incoming and the outgoing president of the United States talking about the, the market hitting a significant number over the last couple of days. But if you, have, if you were in a panic back in, in March, you wouldn't be there to enjoy this and to experience this. And what you tend to find is that you have these big rallies that take place. In order to benefit from it, you have to be there. In order to be there, you have to be comfortable. In order to be comfortable, you have to save. In order to save, you have to understand that I got this money by taking on risk. And therefore, tomorrow is not going to be the same as today. I need to set some aside. You rinse and repeat and allow time to bring you the returns that, the returns that you're seeking. And that is the key to your financial success.